the Tandem Canon, the Game Rific podcast where co play is canon and where we all need to R E A D A B O. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> this is episode 50, storybook ending, where we'll get the skinny on Ultimate Games with Martha freaking Marie. <laughs> this is Tiffany. And this is Mia. Let's go straight into the talk from Team Tandem. So, what have you been up to for gamer homework, Mia? I've been playing Overwatch and beating the shit out of people with Brigida. It's great. Oh my gosh, she is awesome. She's amazing and it's really empowering to play as her because, yeah, she's a support character, but she's actually contributing to the team in more than just healing people. She's knocking people the fuck out and it's great. And I love her shield. I love her Mm -hmm. weapons. I love the way that she just talks shit on the battlefield. It's like, oh, she talks a lot of shit. It's wonderful. And I love her rally to me. I'm like, yes, ma'am. Here we go. <laughs> Rise the fuck up. Yep, yep. Even Hamilton will step in like, like let's follow her. <laughs> this is like, <laughs> let's go. I love her addition to the squad. Just, I just love having her in there. She's actually doling out damage and healing her team. And she's a good balanced character that can do a little bit of both. I like that she's a little bit of a hybrid. And so I wish there were more characters that were kind of like that. She's usable and versatile. And I wish more characters had that same level of versatility mm-hmm. instead of everybody getting nerfed. Girl! That's a whole conversation in that, but... Yeah, so that's what's been going on, and I replayed, or I am replaying Saints Row 2, because the Volition episode got my nostalgia feels working, and Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what, let's boot this up again, and I'm having a fucking great time. (laughs) Like... This game, there's just so much about this that I feel like is so underappreciated. If you like open world games, I spent a good 30 minutes just taking barrels because you know how in Saints Row 2, especially, you can pick up random items and just use them as melee weapons for whatever reason. It doesn't matter if it's a telephone pole, a mailbox, um, somebody's walker. Like I was like, yeet, and just... (laughs) <laughs> I, I was playing bowling and, and seeing how many people I could knock over and kill. And it was just so much fun. I got past the missions where Aisha dies and Johnny's mm. in the hospital and stuff like that. And I got rid of the Somdi. And I think all I have to do now is just get rid of Marrow. And that's pretty much it. It's just been so much fun with all the foolishness that goes on. Because every time that I boot up the game and whenever you first log in you're you're on the street in a matter of 20 seconds there's always something popping off whether it's between you and someone else or fellow gang members or the pedestrians beating each other up getting into it with the police like there's always some activity going on and it's oh it's just Makes glorious it feel alive it really does because it's not just you that's being punished for doing stupid shit like punching people in the face or getting in fights or stealing or murdering people there's actual consequences for everybody and I've been cheering on the pimps because <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> the police will start with them. The pimps are like, oh, no, fuck that. So the, the cop tries to get one of them. All the pimps will raise up together as a squad. And that is awesome. It's just entertaining. And, and I just wish that Agents of Mayhem had had that level of detail. And oh, man, if they had that along with all the craziness that goes on in the story itself with the characters, it would have been a perfect game. But yeah. So what have you been up to, Tiff? Oh, a couple of things here and there. Um, I got a little bit more on The Sims Mobile. Unfortunately, I have not been able to play of late, but the character that I had made had married one of the, I would consider them townies, but I had leveled him up to where he was an elder. They become not controllable anymore. So he was practically around about three to five days. Each time you talk to him and he will give you advice on how to progress in your either career or hobby. Eventually, they don't even die. The Grim Reaper that I had seen on a review you doesn't even follow you really he pretty much moves out of the house so he just goes away there is no death or anything like that that you actually see they just move on Mm. or move away so i'm like that kind of lackluster so i know it's kind of like a stepping stone just to see how the sims mobile will do before they do any other upgrade but i've really been able to do much past that another thing is that besides we're playing forget day and and overwatch also finally got to level 100 and actually i guess practically i'm on one level one with the star or level one with the stars i'm wondering will we ever see in our lifetime i'm sure we probably will in the next few months of someone that's like gotten to gold if i ever get to level 200 before overwatch 2 ever comes out then to me i'm happy <laughs> 
But the game that has really gotten my attention has been Breath of the Wild. I mean, like everything that everyone has said over the last year about this game is completely true. There's nothing you cannot do on this game. Practically everything is open world from jump. By the time Link wakes up from his 100-year nap, you can pretty much go straight to the castle right then and there. Wow. You'll be suicide, but you can go ahead and do it. It's, it's so, so freaking beautiful. It's like a moving watercolor painting. And there's just infinite things that you can get into in chaos. It's kind of like all the Assassin's Creed and Far Cry since you've played before, where you have to go to a tower to unlock the map of the area, but that's just for you to view on your actual like map on where things are, but you can go anywhere. Mm. There's no restriction on where you can go. It just depends on your defense and pretty much your skill as a player to get past certain things. Um, and of course, like the higher your defenses are, the higher your clothes get blessed by these fairies or or even like the elixirs or the food that you make. <laughs> yeah, you you get your own version of Cooking Mama and so too. <laughs> it's, it's such a awesome game just to see what hijinks you can get into. And I can see like you can pretty much think like 60 hours easy just collecting resources anything from like collecting mushrooms or acorns making meals out of that there's also elements where you can have different swords or (laughs) or even brooms shields this stuff breaks after a while depending on the level that those weapons are so you have to pretty much like collect as you go along especially try and get higher level weapons when you go and do higher level stuff you can also freeze to death you can make food or elixirs that can pretty much tough up your defenses against the cold for a few minutes he also can ride horses and train them he can also swim and climb but of course that has a certain wheel of momentum so once that wheel runs out you can fall or you can drown and I've done this several times oh (laughs) it's such a great open world of any kind of mischief i can see why this game won the game of the year on several things Hmm. because it's just so well done and it's not necessarily story driven in normal ways that we're used to you can kind of create your own story out of what you have the basis of every zelda story is kind of the same that you go and not necessarily save the princess more like help her in this instance but it's not really driven on you having to go in a linear kind of fashion it's pretty, it's pretty much as you go mm-hmm. so it's cool that it kind of leaves the story up to how you want to play it hmm. but you don't have to have all the puzzle pieces to finish it wow that sounds cool I'm like i want to do the thing yeah so mm. um, i'm yeah you're going to play that for a little bit i, I think you'll like it mm. Awesome. Well, speaking of games that you have to get your hands on we played a way out Mm-hmm. And oh man, <laughs> a way out is a co-op game, and it's very unique in that it offers both online and couch co-op. But the mm-hmm. wonderful thing is, only one person has to buy the game. It's only thirty dollars. Yes. There's roughly about six to seven hours of gameplay, depending on how thorough you are and and how much you want to do exploring and stuff. I think we're close to the end, but we're too busy like getting in the shit and playing around with with certain things. But so, Tiff, what was your first impression of the game so far? Shawshank meets like early early 1960s 50s GTA Mm -hmm. (laughs) and if your person was trying to escape from prison. What brings such a tell of this of this caliber especially to make it as part of the EA originals which is a which is something I think that EA really needed a boast on Mm -hmm. but like the gameplay itself it's very linear in itself it has like a very vignette kind of staging to it each thing even when they're trying to like get out of prison in their escape it's not like they do everything overnight it takes like a series of days to get there because you know there's always like a stopping point like oh we can't get to this park because we need to go get this to or we need to get the, go and get these sheets here and so everything had built to a certain point but it's cool that the core part of the game is that you have to work together with your partner to get out of here these two random guys that are together by circumstances but you find out that their fates are a little bit more entwined than you initially think mm-hmm. you just think it was just some random guys that were literally thrown together by circumstance that's pretty much how it is and like you know half the time I want to push Leo off the cliff, but, <laughs> but you see where his purpose lies and, and you see where Vincent lies too. Mm-hmm. So Vincent's the good guy, right? Yeah, Vincent's um, the more even killed, reserved. He tends to be more of the thinker and thinks about long-term consequences. So if you really like stealth, 
Um, if you prefer, you know, being low profile, Vincent's your dude. But Leo is, is the boss of the wall. Yeah, he doesn't really think about consequences much. He he's smart to a certain extent, but he's more impulsive than anything else. So that creates right. a little bit of problems, at least in the beginning when they first start working together. Yeah, there, it's like the Salem and Rios exactly of the nineteen fifties or sixties. Exactly. Leo is very impulsive, like Salem, and and Vincent is more like the Rios, the thinker, the logical, the the more not necessarily fairly softer but practically it is like you know leo's a little bit more crass than than vincent is but mm-hmm. even though they're kind of like like two halves they're but they're kind of like the yin yang they cannot exist without the other especially on trying to get out to me like the concept of it is it might be like a puzzle in some circumstances but nothing overly tiresome on your brain i don't think mm-hmm. but a lot of it of course a couple of things that you try to get through when especially when you're trying to like get stuff past certain guards since to think logically and also sometimes it's trial by error because there's been a couple of times where we got caught and realized that we didn't do everything completely the first time through but it's just really good just for the story mode of just thinking about all the things you can get into all the things you can play <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say say what else because I know we're not quite done but we've done like quite a bit of hours probably like five four or five hours worth mm-hmm. of gameplay already yeah and that's with us getting into shit mm-hmm. it's been so. really really wonderful and i like how the gameplay is seamless from character to character each character gets their moment to shine and we get to see a little bit deeper into their personal life and kind of how they got to where they got to where they are essentially you know how they ended up in prison What is it that's tying them together? And those really quiet, touching moments that remind you that these are still people, even though they did technically bad things. You know, they have families, they have friends and whatnot who they care about deeply. They have these moments that prison has made them a little bit harder by default because you can't be a bitch in jail, you know, if you want to survive. But outside of that, you know, it's like, oh, these are just normal people who are just have gone through an unfortunate event and getting tied up in something that I think they had no idea or they they didn't really have an idea that they were getting in over their heads at the time. So right. their intentions were good. It's just that shit happened and they were at the wrong place at the wrong time. And yeah, so I like that they do focus on the story aspect just as much as the gameplay. And, right. and they really try to make each person meaningful um they don't feel like caricatures they feel like real people that if you you were walking down the street you would just assume okay it's just a person or whatever but right yeah i i really do enjoy it i'm really i think my biggest concern is what's going to happen after now that the game has been released because ea and everything and kind of what They're known for with studios that do well, and especially with this EA Originals project that's been going on. It's just like, okay, what's what's the catch? Um, Especially with all the bad publicity and things that they've had since Battlefront 2 came out and everything. So, But yeah, definitely if you like co-op, if you like that sort of teamwork-based gameplay, this is definitely a game you should pick up. And it's it's a wonderful way of bonding and mm-hmm. understanding like human emotions and what happens in prison and what that does to you as a person and your ability right. to empathize with other people. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's definitely a good team-building exercise in the least, and especially to make sure that you know that it is a game that you have to listen to each other and work together because the characters cannot survive without the other and they're pretty much leaning heavily on each other both literally and and emotionally in all capacity we recommend the game especially like that and just want to give it a try and i think like with that it's just what ea needs is a good game that really defines the basis of what gaming is Mm -hmm. so um i guess in other news spyro Apparently it's coming back. Uh, yes. Spyro, the Reignited Trilogy just leaked online. And yeah, it's going to be Spyro the Dragon, the original one, Spyro 2, Ripto's Rage, and Spyro Year of the Dragon, which is pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, this will be releasing September 21st of 2018. And part of me is like kind of in my feels like I did play oh, yeah. like Spyro growing up, but it's just, it's weird to think about like, oh my gosh, like I was in high school. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. I just feel fucking old right now. So 
Well, my question is this, because I found out when we were playing Pin and Con and was playing Crash Bandicoot, and they're just like, this feels harder than it was. That's because they amped it up deliberately. Mm. So it makes me wonder if they're going to do that same shit with Spyro. I hope not. I and mean, of course, like they are owned by different different companies. Of course, Spiral is owned by Activision. So I'm hoping that they do not amp it up. They pretty much will keep this in HD release without increasing the difficulty, unless that's what you choose to go. It at least gives people the option to have that instead of just doing it automatically and making us hate life. Mm-hmm. So that's what I am wondering if they will do that. But other than that, I'm looking forward to that. I really, I think I played majority of the spiral games and finish them so i'm really looking forward to this release and stuff so we'll see mm-hmm. uh and another news a new esports gaming stadium is coming to the dfw area uh, at the current arlington convention center is going to get remodeled but mm-hmm. it's going to be a state of the art gamer stadium with over a hundred thousand square feet of space i think they're trying to sink about 10 million dollars into this and it's in yeah. the same area where the ranger stadium is it's near the entertainment um, center in yeah, arlington the cowboys stadium all that att uh, stadium so it's in a prime real estate <laughs> place uh it, the city will convert the convention center into an esports gaming arena and it'll open this fall and it's supposed to be the largest and most accessible one in the country and given the rise of esports and all that i'm really excited about this mm-hmm. um normally the arlington convention center is the home of retropalooza in arlington right. so i'm interested to see what was gonna happen but that's my question because far as i had seen retropalooza was still saying it was in arlington at mm-hmm. the convention centers are they going to work around there because it doesn't say exactly when the stadium is going to open just only that it's going to be this fall so it makes me wonder if if retro palooza was kind of foretold about this already or if they're just gonna have to like work around the construction i don't know how that's going to me either happen. and it, I, I feel like fall is such a quick turnaround for something this massive magnitude of yeah an undertaking so if it does open in the fall i'll be really shocked like i could see this opening maybe next spring or next summer um, right. or even fall of you know 2019 but i was just like really that that soon either way we're really excited about it and this is going to be really awesome news for the dfw area gamers because i would love to have a dallas fuel tournament at at that stadium like please do the thing so and also like that'll be a great place for them to do quakecon that'll be a perfect opportunity to do that yes so i'm like even though of course they've already missed this opportunity with that because you know i think they already booked the gaylord already by the time this had rolled around but this will give a good opportunity to actually move it to where it should be in all the other overwatch tournaments dota whatever that wants to play out here Fortnite, even so i cannot wait to see what they will do and i wonder if it's gonna kind of be like a deal that it doesn't necessarily have to mean that you can either go to like anytime you want to or only when there's like a a game or something like that Mm. so we'll see and i had also learned that there's like a huge game community at ut arlington which is my alma mater i'm like where was this shit when I was there? <laughs> like, of course, like it was uh, esports had not even taken off to that caliber. Of course, like <laughs> over ten years ago. But you know, it's kind of cool that there is now a a community of gamers there that are really looking excited for this to be pretty much in their backyard. So I'm like, oh man, if if I if I had gone to UTA like now instead of a few years ago, I'm sure that'll be even more of a bigger impression on me than it is now, just being an adult, you know, let alone the kid that's still in college. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, that's really cool that kids that are now attending UT Arlington is having the opportunity to have something of this caliber next door to them. So mm-hmm. I'm so jelly. <sighs> Anyway, (laughs) next up, uh, Far Cry 5 has released and for the most part, the reaction to it with gaming journalists and channels and stuff on YouTube seem to have a pretty good response to it. It seems like they really like the gameplay, the the different assistance that you have with the different animals like cheeseburger Mm. and pizza. Oh, yes. And, you know, the teammates that you can kind of find. Uh, There's co-op play with this one this time around, Mm. which is really awesome. For the most part, it's fairly good. As far as I know, it, it doesn't 
really do anything very revolutionary in terms Mm-mm. of the overall story. And there seems to be some chatter among some people that Ubisoft sort of set up this whole conflict and everything, but didn't really follow through exactly addressing that and so i guess you can kind of take that as you will but for the most part i think the response is a lot better than what most people were expecting you know it's a ubisoft game so it's like okay they've kind of gotten rid of some mechanics but at the core of it's still ubisoft game so yeah i don't know if i'm inclined to play it because again animals and me just don't mix but <laughs> but it's like with the co-op play, you yeah. know, it's kind of cool. It's like somebody that I know is playing, even my brother is playing it now, but essentially enjoying the gameplay of it, at least, even if the story is kind of like a take it or leave it kind of deal. But it's like, I might play it down the road. It's going to be definitely one of the games I will play, but not ones that I'm going to pay up front for. No. So I'll wait for that Christmas sale to come around. <laughs> so. Agree. But congrats to Ubisoft for at least stepping up and not mm-hmm. giving us the exact same cookie cutter stuff for the, from previous releases. So, you know, Thank you. It's, it's a step up. It's not revolutionary, but at least it's something that's worth playing. And um, enjoyable, if, at and, least. Yeah. So, you know, more props to them. And then lastly, the new Street Fighter TV series. I'm ah! so excited. Uh, the new series is called Street Fighter World Warrior, um, mm-hmm. and this is going to be a, a live action show pretty much developed by the same people that created Street Fighter Legacy, Assassin's Fist, and Resurrection. Yeah, like this... <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, this series is going to focus, of course, on the more popular characters, Ryu, Ken, Chun-Li, and Guile. Like, I'm I'm excited about this. I, I, oh, yeah. Is it wrong that I want him to be like, Sonic fucking boom! Just Sonic fucking boom! <laughs> yeah, that, that was another great series. But yeah, I seen this and was stoked because I watched Assassin's Fist. In one afternoon, I just sat down and watched the entire thing. And I think it was all released on Machinima for a while. I think like about four years ago and probably still might be there but it's also been released on blu-ray which i got it's a great fan service story because joey ansa he has been the creator he was the director of assassin's fist and he's also going to be the executive producer of the upcoming series too also plays akuma in assassin's fist and i think he's going to resume playing akuma in the world warrior too so yeah he's pretty much a big time street fighter fanboy if you look at his credits that's pretty much all he has written since like 2010 10 and directing videos dedicated to Street Fighter and stuff. I believe everyone that was in Assassin's Assassin's Fist will be coming back for this series, and so I'm really excited. If anything else, if you have not seen Assassin's Fist but is very interested in the lore of Street Fighter, highly recommend it. And there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I just loved it because it was so tastefully done, like most video game movies should. And especially like it was done by a fan, and I think that really made the difference. Hmm. Well, cool. Mm. Mm-hmm. All right, so um, we have some mad interviewing to do. So, Tiff, are you ready to level up? I'm ascending and leveling up! Let's level yeah. up! So, for today's Tandem Topic Tea Time, we are interviewing Miss Martha Marie, who we consider the queen of Ultima Games. Um, yes. We managed to meet up at AllCon this year in Dallas and we decided to have a little night of fangirling and chatting and so it was awesome. yeah so feel free to enjoy and yeah yay Hi, everybody! Okay, so now we're here with Martha. As you know, during our PYT back in the fall, I introduced Martha as being the Otome Queen. Yes. And she's awesome in sharing all of her playing experiences, anime game too. And we're here with her now. Yay. So please tell us all about yourself, Miss Thing. Yeah! Hi, everybody! I'm so, like, happy that I met y'all at Wizard World. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I had met, like, one other person in Texas who, like, watched my videos, so it was nice to, like, have local people. So, yeah, my name's Martha. I make videos on Otome Games, visual novels, anime, just anything garbage I will make YouTube videos (laughs) about. And I am also the founder and creative director of Kira Kira Entertainment. I've been doing that for the past, like, almost eight years now. It'll be eight years in May. Go ahead, girl. Yeah. (laughs) So we do maid cafe and idol performances and informative fandom panels at conventions across Texas. And I've been having a whole lot of fun with that. And it's a great way to be creative. So that's pretty much what I do. Fan. Cool. Freaking fantastic. I didn't realize that you are already a 
eight years into this and I'm sure by now it's like this is more like a passion and a dedicated I hate to say job but pretty much it's I mean it is so. you know I tell my day job I'm like this is my other part time job and I need to be able to get off for these things yeah because I started it when I was in high school and so it's always been just a part time gig kind of continuing on through my education and now beyond right so that is so sweet so what I want to know is like which anime grabbed you first and which is your favorite I know it's like trying to decide between children right you know, so <laughs> do can not to save one you can only save one <laughs> which one would you say but what grabbed your attention first and name a few of your favorites oh, if you gosh. can gosh no I remember when I was a kid you know I didn't know it was anime but I loved right. watching Pokemon yeah mm-hmm. and I was like Pokemon nerd 5000 like I had a Team Rocket outfit and everything like the boots oh. leggings a shirt my mom still has that picture hanging up in her kitchen <laughs> <laughs> but I watched Pokemon and Card Captors aka Card Captor Sakura wow. and I always caught like a, a bit of Sailor Moon after Pokemon before the TV had yeah. been turned off so I didn't know those were anime but I grew up on that so right. I was you know predisposed to it and then in 8th grade I saw a friend reading a book backwards in algebra class oh. and I'm like girl why are you reading the book backwards she's like no no it's not backwards it's manga and I'm like what's oh. a manga so she was reading Marmalade Boy actually cool. and she's like here I'm, I'm finished I'm just rereading it I'll lend it to you so I read the few volumes of Marmalade Boy that she had and then I started watching anime that she recommended to me and so the first couple of like animes that I knew were anime that I really watched were Mermaid Melody and Tokyo Mew Mew. Oh. So Magical Girl anime, and that's one of my favorite genres, if not my favorite genre of all time. Magical Girl, Slice of Life, Idol anime, like I'm into, you know, some pretty cool upbeat stuff. Lately, Cardcaptor Sakura is my fave magical girl, so I'd probably put her up there you mm. know, in the favorite anime line. Lately, I've been watching a lot of anime that have to do with like food and cafes, probably do Due to the whole maid cafe thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Blend S, that was the fall winter anime season, is hilarious. It's about this Italian super weeb who opens up a cafe in Tokyo and all of his waitresses have a different personality. It's great. Hilarious. And of course, you know, Italian super weeb. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh. Food porn in that. Oh my gosh. That's... Take oh, breathe, breathe. Oh, God. Breathe. I love, get, get, get your I tongue love, back in. You got the tongue. Gotta I go love, back in the mouth. <laughs> I, I love noodles. I, noodles are like my favorite thing. I'm reading a new manga yes. by Clamp, actually. Clamp it has this manga called Gate 7. And there's this character. It's very like mystical, magical Japan mythos and all that kind of junk. But the most mysterious character also is a noodle freak. Her guardians have to rein her in because if they go out to like Kyoto in the city, she's like noodle shop noodle shop noodle shop and they're like no ma'am you, you, you can't get other food groups you can't just eat noodles you don't all. tell me how to feel <laughs> Don't tell me how I live my life. I live my life. I want my noodles. I want my noodles. Yeah, right. so I've been watching a lot of Slice of Life. Isekai Shokudo is probably one of my favorite recent animes, A Restaurant to Another World. Mm. This dude opened up a restaurant, and every Saturday, a door to multiple dimensions opens up, and these different creatures and people from other dimensions just show up, and they each have a favorite dish, and that's all they order. There's this lizard man who's always like, Omurais, and I'm like, like, <laughs> wow. Or there's these fairies that are like, we want fruit creeps. They're okay. Very specific. I love that. It's Damn. so goofy. My favorite, though, are the dwarves who want fried seafood and just beer so much. It's hysterical. I guess my question is, those who don't know what an ultimate game is, because I'm relatively new to this, and mm. Tiff is, like, more established, but can you give us an explanation, kind of, what it is in layman's terms? Ultimate mm. games are, like, a subgenre of visual novels. Mm. So, visual novels are basically, it's a game that reads like a story, and then throughout the game, you have choices pop up, mm-hmm. and the choices that you pick determine the ending that you read later on in the game. Right. And so that's a visual novel and that can be any sort of genre of game or any sort of story they want to tell. But Ultimate Games specifically are dating simulators. They are visual novels that are also dating simulators. And so... Or I love to hate you, girl. Yes! (laughs) (laughs) No one can 
into that in a minute. So, but. in Japan, otoge is short for an otome game. Otoge are most likely a bunch of pretty bishis, mm. and then the player has to choose a bishi to try and romance. Yeah. And you want to choose the choices that will get you to your happy ending, and not the sad, everybody the dies. Press. Yeah. I mean, not everybody doesn't always die, but you know, there are some games where people die, and we don't like. So, basically, it's kind of a choose-your-own-ending story. Cool. Beat that Goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, if there were a Goosebumps visual novel... Oh, my God. Oh, so I have a friend over here in the back. We're chilling at a con. But uh, if there were Goosebumps or, like, a visual novel that was like Goosebumps... I'd play that. Right? Yeah. yeah. That'd be so That'd be fun. interesting, like, I'm actually. so there. <laughs> Just yes. write to Goosebumps. They can make a movie with Jack right. Black in it. They can. They can make. They can a make game. a. They can make another one like Paul that. Stein. Get on that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Help us out, please. Please do the thing. Oh, God. Do it. <laughs> So what got you into playing Ultimate Games, and do you remember which one hooked you first? Or oh yes, I remember you? that game very clearly. I met one of my best friends in college, and her name is Michaela Laws. If you don't know who she is, she is the creator of Seduce Me, the Otome, and that has a sequel, and she's she's created a bunch of different visual novels, but we met as freshmen in college, and before Otome was even on my radar, she was a fan of Otome before she became a creator. So we were both into anime, and we would watch anime together and talk about this and I see her doing something on her phone and I'm like what are you doing? And she's like I'm playing an Ultimate game and I'm like what's an Ultimate game? So she kind of explained it to oh. me and she told me about Voltage Inc which is like one of the most yes. popular Otome gaming producer companies in the fandom. Right. So I went ahead, it was winter break or spring break, I was visiting my godmother's house and I couldn't sleep. So I decided to go ahead and download one of those games and I was looking through my choices and there was one called Be My Princess. And so Be My Princess was the first Otome game I ever played. I was laying in my godmother's guest room at stupid o'clock at night <laughs> <laughs> playing through this game and I'm like, this is the best thing ever. And I chose Prince Ro Roberto, because I was like, he sounds the most like the Italian of the group. I, I don't know, I had a thing for Italian dudes. So I finished the game that night. I just kept on going. I just continued on from there, and it just grew into this thing. Now to this day, did you finish all of the story modes on that one? I haven't played Joshua or the butler, Zane. Ooh, choices. Played Roberto, Keith, Wilfred, Edward, and then Yakov, the Russian model prince. <laughs> of course. Because I always do this, like, stupid Russian accent. <laughs> like, this vaguely Eastern European accent in my videos. Like, sometimes I just pop into vague accent in videos. <laughs> it sounds like Gru from Despicable Me, and I'm like, who is Gru? I was doing this voice before Gru. <laughs> <laughs> You don't hear them talk, well, for the most part. Not yeah. in Voltage. There are yeah. some, uh, like, indie-developed games that do have full voice acting, but mm -hmm. Voltage, they only release, like, select few, like, stories right. with voice acting, so it's mostly silent. Or, like, a voice silent. trailer or something yeah. like right. that. Right. Since Voltage only really does mobile games, right. I don't think they do that. But games for, like, the PS Vita or 3DS or... Mm -hmm. I need to get me a PS Vita because there are so many games that I can't oh, yes, play. Yeah. yeah. Girl. I no, I, don't know, I need to do it. I need to do it. But I'm just like, I thought big chunk of money. Yeah. But I'm just like, I'll save up. Especially if you already have PS Plus, too. You know, go See, ahead I don't have games. PS Plus. I have the Nintendo 3DS XL. Oh, okay. But that's the only, like, console besides my PS2 rip that oh. I have. So, we already know that you already have a video on, on your favorites. Mm -hmm. and you, I think you talked about I mean, about that was, it. like, yeah. three years ago almost. Yeah. So. so, what are your favorites, like, you would consider right now? Now. Yeah, right. My current favorites. Hmm. Let's see. I really, I really enjoyed this game called Hustle Cat hmm. that I got on Steam. Ooh. It it's delightful. You play as Avery Gray, which can be male, female, or non-binary. Cool. Uh, and you can also pick the skin color of your character, so they have yes. various shades. Right, so you can you can pick someone that it's not gonna look exactly like you, but it will be so choices are good. Representative. Right. Yeah, representative is good. <laughs> yes. So in comparison play, to what's out there, right. mostly out there. So you so. play as Avery Gray, and Avery Gray is a recent graduate looking for a job. Oh, cool. And one day you walk upon this very ostentatious building, and it's called a cat's paw. And it's a cat cafe. Little do you know, the cats there are also the people working in the cafe. Oh my gosh! So they can. 
switch back and forth between cats and people. But honestly, I was so wrapped up in the story. When I finished a route, I was like, that's it? Like, are we done? Why are we done? Right. I was, it was great. The characters, there are multiple people of color as options, and there are male, female, like, there's a lot of diversity right. within your options. So Hustle Cat was another one I got off of Steam that I really liked. Cinderella Phenomenon is the one I'm currently streaming. Yeah. yeah. And that is, it's free on Steam. I've, I've just been going through the Steam visual novel section and picking yeah. stuff out. And if you like fairy tales with a twist, I think you'll enjoy that game. I'm having a lot of fun. And the varying choices of romantic options are quite because I, I haven't been playing as many uh, games on my phone right. as much, but Voltage used to have just individual apps for yeah. games, but they yeah. put them like all, all together into oh. one app, so it's like a catalog. Oh, cool. um, so I've been transferring games over, and sometimes I might replay some stuff when I transfer it over. So Seduced in the Sleepless City was one I replayed recently. It's, it's very cosmopolitan, rich, urban, young people but it's selling a fantasy and if you want to just get lost in a rich luxurious life for a second it's pretty fun yeah mm -hmm. like mentally adding stuff to right you're just like right. <laughs> i can play this and i can play this <laughs> dream daddy is still one yeah. of my favorites oh, like so to play play it. It. oh about that. It's Whatever. so wonderful, and the humor in it is just so great. Like, I found myself constantly laughing, because it was just so On point. delightfully yes. hilarious. And I like the personalization of the MC thing. It's like, build a dad, and so you build what your dad's Sono would look like. I got to make a dad, and I named him Philip. Someone <laughs> drew me fan art of Philip, actually, Aww. and showed it to me on Twitter. It was really sweet. Yay. So yeah, Dream Daddy. Hustle Cat, Cinderella Phenomenon, Seduced in the Sleepless City, Love Letter from Thief X. That's still one of my constant favorites because I've played most of the routes in that game. You know, thieves in the night, Robin Hooding yeah. to they're stealing stuff from museums that was taken wrongfully. I could go on, but yeah, those are some, some so, favorites that I've been enjoying. Well, because we're about to hop on the opposite of this, and of course I have okay. seen the video for this one, but it's probably grown since then. Yeah. <laughs> the ones that you think are absolutely trash. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> she's laughing in the background. God, um, I, I think I, I played one so far. I think on your list. Oh, really? Okay. So, "Kissed by the Baddest Bitter" is <laughs> yes. That is the most controversial yes. opinion that I have on my YouTube channel yes. today. I still get comments on that video like, "You stupid bitch, that's the best game ever," and I'm like, "Okay, whatever." The premise of the game is that you end up in a hotel and you're trying to find your way to some event, but you take a wrong turn and end up breaking a very expensive vase, a la Oran High School Hotel Club. Oh, and God. so the people who own that vase are mobsters, and yeah. so they get you, put you in a cage, and auction you off on the black yes, market. Man. And oh, the people yes, who man. bought you, quote unquote, they're like, we bought you to save you and to not have you be with like a terrible, pervert, awful person. I'm like, and it's like, oh, thank you, I appreciate that. But they won't let you go. Exactly. They say, because we bought you and we saved you, you owe us. So you have to do whatever someone says for X amount of time. And I'm um, like, so yeah. you're just I'm like, so you're supposed to else. fall in love with somebody who's forcing you to, like... Exactly. No. Oh, like, I am not a fan of human trafficking, therefore yeah, right. I don't like this game. And on top of that, I'm not sure, did you pick the main guy? Because the main oh, guy... Oh, Ace no, I didn't pick him because he is the worst of the bunch, but he's he like was. the most popular voltage male. I and know. I don't know Houseway. how. Wow. Oh, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what, what that whole like trope. You know, some people have commented, it's a fantasy. They don't want that to actually happen in real life. And I'm like, it's well, not my fantasy to be bought by a creep and yeah. then told that I have to follow orders. The prologue I first chose was the guy who made you bark like a dog and eat out of a dog food bowl. And oh, was this was during the story play? It was in the prologue. Well, I can't see. I skipped over all of it. Apparently, I was like. I don't well, I don't know, maybe I read the first episode of him for okay, free. That's probably episode maybe it was the first episode for free, but I was like, if this happens in chapter one, I don't want to see what I'm about to punch him like, in the throat. Pet play is a thing. That's a fetish. I get it. It's consensual and there are boundaries. Yes. And this dude had no boundaries. And so then they were like, play the thief's route, because his he's nicer. And so I was like, but fine, just thief. to appease you. 
he was nice and kind of goofy, but there were still things that he was doing that were problematic that made me uncomfortable. Right. So... And it, it didn't help that there was also a police officer on this road. Oh, yeah, it was as a dirty well. cop. He was a dirty cop. Of, of course. course he was. So, see, if this were a TV drama, I'd be all over it. But exactly. I don't want to insert myself and into Especially it. in a fantasy context exactly. where... Exactly. Guys are already creepy as it is, mm-hmm. and we see this sort of behavior duplicated in real life. Oh, I, yes. yes. I don't know. If I'm going to get immersed in a game, I want to get immersed in something that's going to make me feel good and right. happy. And mm-hmm. and I don't know. Like, that just... Not it, saturated. When you're, when you're so concerned about, like, the safety of the person that you're playing as... Like, you, you've taken all the fun and the fantasy right. out of it. Exactly. exactly. Oh, God. So that's the Ugh. one that really got me a lot of flack, but that also got me a whole lot of attention on yeah. my YouTube channel. So, thanks, guys. <laughs> Being a decent human being for, for, for calling saying that out. Yeah. But um, I, I do that a lot on my channel. I'm just like, this is crap, and we're going to tell you it's crap. Yeah. Right. Um, so someone recommended I play another Voltage game called My Sweet Bodyguard. I didn't end up playing it without the recommendation because, honestly, I thought most of the guys were kind of ugly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm not attracted to you. I'm not paying money. But someone was like, oh, play Subaru's route. He's the best. So I I started to play it, and all he does is, like, insult you and degrade you and patronize you the entire time. And I'm like, I stopped halfway through the game. I'm like, no. he's not getting any better. Don't patronize me. It's the, always, like, the, the, the canon route. Except like the for my can- forged oh. wedding. Because Yamato is precious. That was the That's one that got me in. And Yamato, Yamato was the one I chose. Oh, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> he is such a good boy. And when when the MC's like, oh, I'm so soft and squishy, he's like, no, that's a good thing. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> Let me love on you. I was like, don't mind it for two. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, but oh, those two, there was something I played recently that I was like, mm, it's not, oh my god, this game is immediately trash, but there is some questionable content. You are playing as a woman and at an advertising firm. Yeah, oh. and you end up sleeping with one of the guys at your office, but you were blackout drunk, therefore you don't remember. Oh, and I'm yeah. like, god. That's day was brand. he was he sober at the time? Uh, he See, was, was, he was also drunk. Yeah, he was oh. tipsy, oh. but he remembers that they had sex. So like. Maybe it wasn't quite so devious. It's not as devious or malicious because he wasn't completely sober. Yeah. But, but. even when you're tipsy, if somebody's blackout drunk, right. you don't have sex with them. So, no. I again, I, I expressed this opinion and people were like, Martha, it's not black and white. I'm like, no, it's not black and white, but that makes me uncomfortable. It's right. problematic. Like, it's still weird. And- yeah. There was one this? other game that I played a reason. I streamed it, actually. And I made a video about it also called My Secret Pets. If you've played... (laughs) (laughs) She laughs again. If you've played Dandelion, the storyline is eerily similar to Dandelion. But Dandelion was made by Cheritz, the folks who made Mystic Messenger. My Secret Pets is you... Uh, are a student and you have like five pets because your parents own a pet shop and one day you come home and poof they're all pretty boys <laughs> so and it's like a I don't want to like date my pets because those are my children right <laughs> like, you've seen me naked right exactly. I mean, like that's, that's not the whole plot line <laughs> oh my god <laughs> like it makes me uncomfortable but, like what people are into it that's fine like that wasn't what threw me off the guy I chose was the pet you had the longest I was like maybe this will be good so I go in and and then, like, when it gets to the love scene, it's super non-con. Like, she says, stop, multiple times, Aww. and he doesn't stop. And, like, they play it off later as, like, you know, okay, maybe that actually, no. 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 If you're saying I, and no. see, there were multiple routes in that, because I wanted to see if it was just his route, or not every route was like that, but there were multiple routes in the game that were very non-consensual when she said, no, stop, that hurts. Uh, and they would continue. And I'm like, why is this something we have to keep going over? Yeah. Exactly. So other parts of the game were very enjoyable. Like, I liked when they interacted during the daytime and there was a plot with the wizard who turned them all into people and how devious he is. And so I liked the story, the actual plot. Right. But those love scenes were just real cringeworthy. Mm. So I'm just like, if it's on sale and you like the whole pet boy trope and you can not play these particular routes, yeah, go for it. But if it's for full price, mm mm-mm. Cut it out. Yeah. 
dandelion. Go for dandelion. Go for dandelion instead. Yeah, because it's, it's basically the same story, but a little better. More consensual. Yeah. Like, uh, I guess, what would you recommend for someone who's new into these games? Like, if they're curious about it and they want to get into it. And yeah. One that doesn't give you overly oogie feelings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Voltage is a good company to start with because there are a lot of games. Voltage USA also has great games. Now, their system, the way they ticket things, is a bit pricier. Right. But they have they have great representation as far as race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation. Yeah. And their writing is actually quite good. Yes. I played Gangsters in Love. That was a great one. And they're on seasons. This is like seasons. Yeah, of stuff. like what? seasons, multiple seasons. Yeah. And then A Story of Fate's Kiss. Mm-hmm. Do yourself a favor and play Hades' route. Yes, that's who I started with too. <laughs> It's Greek face, so you have yeah, like so Hades Greek gods. and Sweet. Um, Hades, one of the two top gods of Olympus, is a black man with purple hair. And <laughs> oh, he is uh, rapping it. I'm like, go ahead with your tan self. He <laughs> is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and his, his, his um, they oh, play Persephone little. off as his niece, mm-hmm. and she's this like gorgeous, thick black lady with beautiful. Oh, twists. she is oh. pretty. Sweet. I'm like, can can we have her as an option? Please, because you do have Medusa as an option. She, yeah, wow. and she's the redhead, right? And she, yeah, and she's pretty. She is pretty. She- also, the other one, the Castaway one, is pretty oh, good ooh, too. Oh, Castaway loves adventure. That one's fun. I you're love- you're on a stranded desert island, shipwrecked, and it's fun. That's a good one. Arthur is my bae. Arthur, he's so freaking cute. I mean, he's the, the Indian stoic, millionaire, the Indian <laughs> British millionaire yes. up there being all stoic and secret, but then you find out why. It's like. Yes, I loved <laughs> Arthur and then Serena Zhang, the doctor. Oh, she is. She don't take no shit from nobody. She really don't. Because she looks like everybody likes suspects. Like, I don't trust <laughs> you. I don't trust you. I really don't trust you. I really you. don't trust you. It's like, you tripped me that one time, so I really don't <laughs> trust you. You know, she calling out everybody. Like, fool me you. once. Indeed. There's a company called Shall We Date that has good yes, games. Yes. One I really enjoyed was Arabian Dreams. So it's like Arabian Nights but with a twist. Oh. You Sinbad, that was fun. I will Sinbad too. So <laughs> I like Sinbad. Uh, they they have a pirates game that's quite enjoyable. I do enjoy pirates. And then there's a magical girl Ojima game from that company. It's called War of Prayers. That's what it's called. And you're a prayer maiden. And it's basically a magical girl. I got the bad ending, so I need to replay it and get the good ending. But it was still so, so, so good. And you see the magical, like, costume transformation and, like, shiny effects and fun stuff. My and heart. It's insane. great. I'm like, magical girls and Ojima games? Yes, please. Yes, like, that marriage needs to have, yeah. Like, give me that was a good one. Yeah, so good companies to start with are Voltage, Shall We Date, and Cybird is another mobile mm-hmm. Ojima game company for mobile and tablets and then if you just look through the steam ojima games mm-hmm. like the top 10 on there are pretty solid some are free to play some are not i mean there's options out there you just gotta know where to look yeah. but good stuff speaking of a ton of tropes that we kind of like brush across the surface right just now in video games what are the best consistent ones in ultimate games that you absolutely love that they are keep is the ultimate core of what makes an ultimate game like trope wise yeah good stuff of good things. Good. Most of these characters, they are there to make you feel desirable. Yeah. Wanted. Confident. If you're not getting that in your life, this can help satisfy that need mm-hmm. in a non-toxic way. So, you know, sure you'll spend some money on it, but you're not dropping money on alcohol or drugs or Whatever any else. other questionable activities you're doing. Right. Yeah. So it's it's a way to satisfy a need because I think humans need to feel desirable and seen and appreciated. Agreed. And these characters are a way to do that in a safe, positive way. I agree. If you like to read read this is just kind of an extension of that it's like a manga that moves a little you actually have some power to steer the story as a player right so if you like video games and you like comics or books it's like a nice marriage between the two Mm. so you can enjoy your favorite types of media in a different way Mm -hmm. those i think are the main two right that i really enjoy about otome games what things do you wish would change about it i know we've already covered 
the quality. I mean, just the usual general crap that comes with the patriarchy. <laughs> like, yes. Lord. You know, misogynistic tendencies. And you know, yes. especially since he started in Japan, and they are even more behind in feminism and intersectional feminism. They yes. are. I am so sick and tired of the MC being so passive. I agree. That is what really, passive, really burns I'm me. like, can you do something? Like, I know it's supposed to be a self-insert. Right. But make some choices with your life. Like, you're making choices about these dudes, but then, like, this major life event's happening. What do I do? Or there are also a lot of MCs that are so inexperienced. Yeah. They're like, oh, my God, at least he's leaning in to kiss me. I've never done this before. Yeah. Exactly. And I'm like, can we can we have someone who Owns has it. kissed somebody, has had sex, has right. done yeah. this kind of like, stuff? Google is free, even if you Google know. is free. <laughs> I'm like, there are fan fiction and stories out here in the universe like you didn't get in on YouTube that YouTube exists like you're yeah. so excuse like you lifetime not movies know. nothing like lifetime nothing. movies something something but it's porn just like hub, maybe porn hub, like get into <laughs> something to get some experience with even though like a lot of the games have evolved even while I was playing the irresistible mistakes at least she's a professional one but it still comes with a little bit of missishness that I don't really mm. uh, but of course this is coming from a westerner's eyes I'm seeing that but it's like have a bad Backbone, yeah. I just hate every single thing when when the significant is talking and they're just like, well, um, and uh, I'm like, <laughs> grow a pair. You are in a high stakes, high income job. Why are you sewing just all um and um like and, you'd uh, never get promoted that exactly. way? Exactly. Yeah. Like, no, how did you get your job? <laughs> right. I just find that a lot they're on extreme ends of the spectrum. Like either they're super passive and spineless, or they're like manipulative to a fault. Yeah. And I'm like, there is a happy medium we can yeah. find. And don't most of the the main characters don't they usually tend to be young like super young yes or? most of them are usually either in high school or early 20s there's one game I can think of where she's in her mid 30s and that's falling in love again from voltage that was a good game but yeah some diversity in age would also be good because there are you know older women I think who would enjoy these agree yeah, yeah. agree yeah if 50 shades is any indication 50 shades and twilight <laughs> and whatever yeah, else. just twilight Make it better than Make it better. Yeah. Like- I mean, a lot of the stories that we've already played is way better than that. So, I'm just saying. Even though, like, a lot of the massive, the guys in there can easily compete against Christian Grey. But I wish that kind of trope would change. If it's your fantasy to be abused in that way, I don't know what to say. But, yeah. but I just wish that wasn't the trope all the time. Especially how abusive and how they bark at you. And, I'm like, how do you fall for this guy? Like, then there are women in the real world who are actually married to these women. Exactly. So, exactly. Yep. Yeah, and Korean dramas have shown me. Oh, that. God. <laughs> God. Oh, the jerk always the wins. The grab. Ooh. Oh, I hate that. It's like, yeah. And know. they do that sometimes in these ultimate games, the wrist grab, and I'm like, stop it. Also, another trope, the characters with the no eyes thing in the long Oh, space. God. <laughs> Oh, you didn't mention that. Yeah. Oh, God. They're, they always have, like, bangs to try and cover it, but a lot of the main characters, because it's supposed to be a self-insert, they don't have eyeballs. And I'm like, well, not everyone is a skinny, pale-skinned, brown-haired Agreement. woman. Agreement. So please, I don't just give her some eyeballs. Give her some eyes. It's so creepy. I played, it was like an after-school game. That oh, after-school affairs. Yes. That's a good one. What's cool about the newer games is that a lot of them have trailers when you first start playing oh, the yes, game. Oh, yes, those and are fun. Those are so much fun. So you see her with eyes. She has bangs, but, you know, she actually has eyes. But when the teacher was about to kiss her and saying how, like, when you look at me, that drives me crazy. I'm like, look at you, how? She has no <laughs> eyes. That drove me nuts. When like, your thought, sockets <laughs> bore into my soul. <laughs> like, like, you're scared. <laughs> I so love what you, how do you Beauty do this? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. What <laughs> eyes? What eyes? There were none. <laughs> they didn't say which eye, okay? The third <laughs> eye. <laughs> oh, girl, your, your, your skin eyes are so pretty. Oh. <laughs> Like someone make a horror <laughs> Ultimate game where she's just like gouged her eyes. Oh my god. DC one dick pick too many. It was like, bad enough. Who you think this is Craigslist? It's a visual novel. That's another favorite of mine that I really, really enjoyed. I mean, it's so 
effed up, but it's it's delightful. <laughs> if you have serious trauma, like there are so many warnings before you start playing the game. They're like, if you are easily disturbed, we are say under warning. eighteen, or have experienced emotional trauma, don't play, play this game. game. So we've mentioned, you know, Dream Daddy, of course, yes. and there are some other games that we're more used to, I guess, like Episodes, Choices, Regency Love. We've both played that. See, I've heard of Regency Love, but I haven't played it myself. Yeah. Love, it's really. It. If you like Pride and Pride. To this, Ooh. like, re- yeah, like Jane it's Austen, kind shit. of in that oh, realm. Oh, yeah, and it's it's very interesting because you have the Darcy trope, mm-hmm. the Wickham without being a dick trope, <laughs> um, and there's a guy that literally looks like Alan Rickman. It kids you it's not, weird. and he's a teacher. Yeah. Oh it's, my god, it's, it's weird. It, I was it's, like. I, I could t- kind of do this, but like yeah, he's so <laughs> sweet and stuff. But of course, each of them have their own little things, like Hang judgments up. and stuff like that. And you have this oatmeal character, like he doesn't even have eyes by definition. He just have these beady eyes. He's a character you oatmeal. choose because you are lonely, oh. Oh, and that's his whole arc. Like he looks he's like clumsy. a Peanuts character. He really. Like, everybody does. else is drawn in so much mm-hmm. detail, and you can see like wrinkles and stuff. But he's just like I, I know. <laughs> like and that's it. Oh, bless your little. Are dating oatmeal. <laughs> Put a spoonful of jam in that oatmeal. Right. Spice it up a little. Even at the end, it kind of tells you, like, yeah, you would have been better being by yourself. Damn. <laughs> 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 They were trying to give you signs. <laughs> if give you signs to abort, abort. <laughs> yeah, but um, other ones include like chapters and the Is It Love series. But have you played? Yeah, any I, of the those? only game I've played on this list is Dream Daddy. Dream Daddy. Yeah, I need to play these other games. I have not played the Vampire series like the Drago. But I played Ryan and started playing Gabriel of the Is It Love series. They are the kinds that you are given a certain amount of energy. I think like three hundred energy to burn uh, through per day and it renews every 24 hours. Okay. And you can play like extra games to get more of that but mm. it's pretty much if you want to continue playing you better pay. Oh god I've it's, already talked about that on my channel. I'm like yeah. I am an impatient woman. Yes. <laughs> A lot of it with Ryan I'm up here burning through it. I'm like <laughs> yeah, it's, it's getting to that good fuck. He's like come here girl. Oh, right out of energy. I'm like Oh, just, just give me that five hour. It'll be fine. <laughs> Ladies' Choice is actually one I think we have found on Kotaku that Maybe. Kevin had told us about. And it's a downloadable game that someone had that you can get for free or just donate to her. Oh, nice. But it's kind of like the Pride and Prejudice 2 where you choose, I think, three guys. Mm. Choices and episodes are westernized games, but the mm. same concept. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I've learned just so much. I want to dive in, but I want to stay away from the problematic stuff. I play the crap so you don't have to. Yeah. It's like the nostalgia crate. This yes. Yep. Thank yes. you for getting the, that reference. The automate nostalgia crate. That's awesome. God, I would love to see him play an automate game. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess let's go to the world of random tandem. Are you ready? Let's let's do this. Let's ready? get it. Woo-woo. Okay, so if you could create a plot to any Ultima game, which would it be, Martha? All right, so, like, I've thought about this. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. No, really. <laughs> so, like, she's like, I'm ready. I am like, ready. See, I am also really into idols, like, J-pop idols. Mm. But there's this rule, female idols specifically, that you are not allowed to date while yes. you are being an idol. Mm. And I'm like, but what if all of the idols, they're, like, lesbians, so, like, if you as the MC were, like, a new female idol, and you learned about the no dating rule, right. but then you find out the idols are dating each other. So, like... <laughs> Man. You, That'd be hilarious. That would you, be hilarious. You know, you meet other idols who happen to be single, because, you know, no dating, but yeah. then you end up just being like, wow, I'm actually really gay for this person, and they're like, wow, I'm gay for you, too, and I'm... We gotta get on this shit. I <laughs> Like, Copyright that right now. Like, just, okay, don't do the thing, guys. My I don't like being TM. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just, I just give it a good queer content. I have friends who are, you know, specifically lesbians or right, you know, right. pan queer, bi, 
And they're like, I love Otome games, but it's so hard to find Otome games about women who like women. Right. Like, yeah, that's a gap that needs to be filled, you know, and I as a queer person would like to see that. Right. Also, I'm idol obsessed, and I think idols should be able to date, so, and there's always speculation in the fandom of these two idols, like, being together because, mm. you know, we're terrible, shitty people in the fandom. Right. So, let's make up a virtual idol group or two and get them together and see what happens. <laughs> and also, I could get all of my, like, lady voice actor friends to voice it and make a dope soundtrack, That's so. Awesome. I am here for that. That's so awesome. Just, because all of the people I know, you know, who are making these games, they're like, I'm in the middle of a game right now! <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can write, but I can't draw or program for crap, right. so. Right, right. Oh, there's somebody out there. It takes a village, yeah. my oh, dude. I would just love to create a game about gay idols. <laughs> I would enjoy that very much. And so. plus, it's needed. Because yeah. there's not a lot, especially like a lot of the choices in games you have, it's just one choice for your same Just head or more Yeah. 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 A so. lot of the Japanese games will have one character that's very effeminate and you dresses up as a girl, and you're like, oh, maybe I get to be a lesbian, or maybe I can date this girl, and it turns out to be a boy anyway. Or it's like where the boy is, like, obviously gay for another character, but then they make him a romantic option in uh, Serendipity Next Door. There's this character who likes to call himself Byron. I think his real name's Keiichi or something. You can just hear snaps when he walks in the room. (laughs) (laughs) He's so flamboyant. And I don't mean to say that all flamboyant men are gay, but the writers wrote him to where he's so, so, so affected towards the landlord yeah and they're alone together a lot so obviously in all the other routes he is alone with the landlord for hours and I'm like so are I'm, y'all sure it's like, like smashing sure. is going on and if it is go get your life like yeah. that's all that's all but why is he an option for me yeah like <laughs> I ship them I don't I don't want Byron or the when landlord have, can like, keep Byron the other options are just terrible people <laughs> just like, you'll get there though one day. Aww, well, I don't know. What would y'all create, or what would you like to see in you know future Otome games that come? Girl, out? I got a list. Hold my beer. Not necessarily <laughs> like a list, but it's pretty much everything that we've covered. Even though you, you see it more in like Voltage on Ink US a little yeah. bit more to have the options if you wish to have like a same sex relationship, but there's usually only one. Yeah. I wish that there was more choices for people. It kind of sucks when your the heterosexuals are able to choose, you know, multiple, and you have. One One. decision. But I'm glad it's there, but I wish it was more inclusive of everybody. Mm. The reason why I also like the other more Americanized versions of Ultimate Games because you're able to create characters or select your own character to have your same skin color and Mm -hmm. and hair and stuff like that so it can be a little bit more reflective of what you look like. Mm -hmm. So I wish like a lot more games could be that way, especially in Voltage US. I can understand, like, main Voltage Inc. cannot because most of the shakes are in Japan. And, of course, I wish that a lot of tropes will be gone. What plot are you, what do you want for a game? It's so many, though. I love fantasy games, period, and mm-hmm. I wish that someone of my color can be in said fantasy game and have those choices set up mm-hmm. among her. Mm-hmm. So, I would like to have that, so someone please make it happen. Thank you. That's all I have to say I about feel that. Like, hmm. There was a new fantasy game that was released yeah. in Love Struck. And I feel like the romantic options right. are people of color, but I mean, I think the MC is. Well, Still, and that's why a lot of times I play the other Americanized versions because mm-hmm. I can do that. I can mm-hmm. don that cloak and go forth as a sex base. But yeah. as much as I do enjoy them and I do like that there's a variation of characters, but for myself it is not that. It's still kind of stagnant. I, that's my favorite thing. I like to consider Bioware games. Girl! Otome games. Girl! Girl. Girl. Be friends. Girl. Oh my god. Because actually I was thinking about that because I love Mass Effect. It, pretty much Mass Effect is, is a Mass giant Effect. Ultimate game. Mass so is a giant Ultimate game. Dragon Age is a giant Ultimate game. Yeah. A giant yeah. Ultimate game. And <laughs> they, recent, like, they recently jumped on it with Skyrim. You know, you oh, can marry who you want to. Fallout, you could mm-hmm. romance. Even though before, in 3 in New Vegas, I really liked doing the like little option where you could just be like, hey... I don't want to do that. Let me seduce you. And they're like, okay. And then you're like, okay, bye. I'm not going <laughs> to. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, but, but that's that's one of the reasons why I like Bioware is because you get to create your own mm, character yeah. and mm. romance that you want Exactly. To. 
And so I think I would want my game to be kind of in that universe, sort of in the mindset of Andromeda. You're in this new galaxy. There's only so many people in this population, and you have to choose a partner. Like, we've gotten to a point where we've been able to create a stable colony, I guess. Mm -hmm. But now we have to expand the population because, you know, people, we lost so many people on the way to Andromeda and stuff. But you get to choose between different suitors to be raise a family and whatnot and so yeah so it would include trans partners as well because then that way they would also be able to help procreate and whatnot and so that's really interesting i'd Mm -hmm. I'd love to have because i think with because like with gil part of his storyline included wanting to start a family and his best friend happened to be one of the what was it called like population yeah she was like a she was like a, a reproduction yeah, it was just like specialist. Why don't you have a baby? Let's do the thing. And it's just like okay, oh, okay, yeah. And so it would be cool to be like, okay, well, I want to, I want to help expand the human race, or I guess the Milky Way race, because yeah, we're all one now. And trying to choose between different suitors, and so you'd have a variety of different genders and species to choose from, and whatnot, mm, and sexuality. Like shit out of there. So mm. yeah, for real, that's yeah. sounds good. I love that. Mm. So yeah, that's just that's me. <laughs> I will play all of that. <laughs> See, I also love witch games. Any oh. sort of like witchcraft games or like magic things See, that involve oh, spellcasters. I was thinking like along the lines of like Harry Potter too. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. There's a game from Shall We Date called Wizard Dress Heart, and you you are in a Hogwarts esque school learning magic. You have options to date wizards, so that's yeah. fun. Um, I just, I'm like, can I have more magic? So every week we choose a podcast or YouTube that we recommend. Sure. Do you have any that you would recommend? It doesn't necessarily have to be Ultimate Games. Okay, well, if you want more Ultimate Games, there is a channel called Kayla's Lovely, and this lovely lady named Kayla (laughs) plays through Ultimate Games. The ones that you can play through without getting copyright strikes. Right. Um, so she'll play through like mobile Otome games, and it's actually her like, sitting there and doing the voices and playing through the game. Uh, and each awesome. video is like, I don't know, 17 to 20 minutes long. And she does it in parts, so it's fun. She actually created an Otome game called Snow Kissed Romance, and that's a fun one. I, I think I've heard of it. Oh, really? Yeah, and she did a really good job with it. Yeah, so I recommend Kayla, definitely. She's super sweet and always really nice. And she's adorable. Her voice sounds like an anime character. Like, <laughs> she's so cute. Aww. So Kayla is someone, if you want to know more about Otome games, I would recommend. Anima Gaming. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I found her through when I was looking for playthroughs of Dream Daddy on YouTube. Yes. She is a lesbian gamer and she's English so she has a great accent and her and her wife are adorable and so she sits there and plays games on her channel and so she's hilarious. Oh man. I laugh so much and so loudly when I watch Anima's videos because she is something else like her sense of humor it's ridiculous like it's so like british but there's also the american humor mixed in because she's lived here for so long all right so it's this wonderful hybrid sense of Hi- humor hodgepodge of stuff yes and she, <sighs> the commentary she has her dad sona that she made for dream daddy his name was nubus <laughs> n-o-o-b-u-s nubus why not sounds like a harry potter character right <laughs> I think she's done some stuff with Super Butter Buns. Yeah, an anima. It's like anime, but with an A at the a, end. So I just anima. subscribed to her. On yes! Yeah. We should watch some of her videos tonight after we stream, because okay. anima is back. I need to watch. <laughs> Thank you. I, I just... Subscribe. <laughs> Yeah, I always yeah. need new YouTube channels to watch. But, like, Kayla and Anima are great if you're into gaming. Honestly, I really like beauty YouTubers. Also, oh. I love skincare, but, like, Jackie Ida is one of my favorite YouTubers. <laughs> and I love that she has her own theme song that she just, like, sings to herself. Awesome. At the beginning. Jackie, 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 Jackie. <laughs> she keeps it real. And she's so funny. Her and Patricia Bright is another beauty YouTuber I love. She also does fashion hauls, so. 
I spent, you know, this many pounds on Fashion Nova or on whatever clothes site, you know, and I'm gonna tell you if these clothes are garbage or not. You'll check them out and you enjoy. Sweet. Uh, Madam Sharky is another YouTuber. I met her through Michaela and she's actually in the Houston area. Her voice is like nothing you've ever heard. She has like anime blue hair. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody goes, hello, my name is Madam Sharky. Oh, oh my god. god. Ever and she plays lots of games. Like she does Ojume games, but she also does RPGs and she streams sometimes with other gamers. Like I think she streamed Dead by Daylight, Death by Daylight recently. Oh, cool. Um, so I like the YouTubers that are down to earth. So yeah, I appreciate that. That's awesome. That is awesome. Do you have one? I guess I have to say, call me Kevin. He has a, a, Kevin. a gaming channel <laughs> and basically he just dicks around with different video games. Okay. Like there's a Harry Potter. MMORPG that he really? plays. And I'm like, I don't know what server it's under, but like he has this this avatar called Jim Pickens and he just goes around and just is like addicted to other people and, <laughs> and just goofs around and stuff and gets into duels and stuff and apparently there's this recurring gag with this character and I forgot his name. It's kind of like Neville Longbottom. The friend has a high pitched voice and he just picks on him all the time and it's just oh. like his little lackey and they just get into stuff but he jumps around between different games so okay. he's a goofy guy and he's just like yeah, let's try to kill my sims. Let's try to find oh my God. inventive <laughs> ways to just make their lives miserable. I think he did some sort of, not necessarily Hunger Games, but Survivor Challenge. Oh, okay. Like, let's stick four people in, in four separate rooms and take away one amenity every time they do like, a specific thing. It's oh, like, wow. this is so cruel. I love this. Fantastic. Well, it's fun. What about you, Tiff? In lieu of us doing story type games, I decided to pick the Dom. I love the Dom. I know it's not him being a dominant. No, his name is Dominic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he says the Dom. And I he feel like I've heard of this channel before, but like, does, nothing is yeah, the, popping up the, in my head. The Lost in Adaptation yeah. series. So he compares like the books to a movie. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And like he'll talk about what stuff was changed, what stuff uh, was lost, right. if the book or the movie is better. And yeah, it's, it's really nice. cool. And what got me hooked is that I was one time in my Never Ending Story Fields and I saw that he had. Oh, done a Lost in Translation book between that and that. And he also did one on the cartoon that existed. Four episodes of the cartoon and how he thought that was absolute garbage. But I also love him dragging Fifty Shades of Grey. So he's been doing the book but also what Fifty Shades actually should have been. Mm -hmm. And then pretty much dragging the writer for filth for like 15, 20 minutes. So oh, good. it's yes. worth it. Love that. Um, Sometimes you scary. just need some bad drama to watch. You yes. really do. Yes. And he's really passionate about that comparing the book a Cliff Notes version of what has changed if you don't have time to read the book. Mm -hmm. So I think that's just great. Nice. So. He's awesome. So yeah, that's pretty much all of our interviewing and, and stuff. Uh, thank you so thank much you. for like working with us. I know our, our schedules were kind of like all over the place. It's like, oh yeah, we'll be here in uh, oh crap! <laughs> Sorry, <yeah. laughs> like, and being tired and hangry all the time. Oh. But we appreciate you so much yes. for for me with us, and no, thank you thank for you for having me on. This was fun. Yes. I always, you know, appreciate making new friends and talking about the stuff that we love. So fan girling, fan yes. girling. Yes. hard, hard. We go hard. We go hard with the fan girling. <laughs> But where can we all find you? You're on YouTube, mm -hmm. right? I am on YouTube. The URL is youtube.com slash Martha Marie. Yes. M-A-R-I-E. From there, you can find my vlog channel. Because I, I go to anime conventions and stuff, and so I usually vlog the dumb adventures I get up to while I'm there. <laughs> yes. And then, if you want to see any of my Idol Maid Cafe stuff, you can go to kirakiraentertainment.com. K-I-R-A-K-I-R-A entertainment.com. <laughs> and you can find all the links and videos and whatnot over there. All my social media is XO Martha Marie, all lowercase, and I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Anything else? Yeah, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Twitter and Instagram are where I am the most active. I like to share memes and cute videos, cute art and stuff. And then on YouTube, I'm talking trash, so. <laughs> but it's good trash. Yeah, exactly. I love it. I call myself a trash ambassador for that very reason. A quality trash. Yes. It I is. hope to one day become recyclable. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh. Knowing me, I'll land in the compost. But, <laughs> hey, you're good for the planet. Good for the planet. <laughs> Something else. Cap oh, no. Captain Planet would be proud. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But yeah, again, thank you so much for being with us. Yes, and, and lending out your, your hotel room for us. So oh yeah, nah, moment. it's chill. I am okay. I always enjoy having company, so. Yay! Oh, thank you. Okay, I, I guess I'll stop it now. I'm so Thanks, sorry. Thanks, listeners! <laughs> <laughs> I like that you still wave. Tiff.
Do you have any final thoughts? Um, That social stuff of, like, Twitter and Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Tumblr. I mean, no big diffs, but, you know, they kind of get lonely. Mm-hmm. Um, as for new followers, we have Black Nerds Play. Yes, they do. A comet named P. <laughs> yes, they are. Daniel Newman. I'm sure he is. <laughs> the Crazy Plane. I'm sure uh, he is. <laughs> Change Games ME on Twitter. Um, thank you guys for following us, and we hope we don't scare you off. And then as for commenters, we have, of course, our favorite people in the world, Twiatch, This Week in Our Collective Heads, Halo Tunes, and then S-Class MB Gaming. Apparently, she came out with mod for different things like, oh gosh, a daycare mod, uh, there's the- oh, for M- Sims. Yeah, for Sims. And so I was like, that's so cool, learning all these things. Uh, Tiff, do we have any special shout outs? Hell yeah, we do. Very, very special shout out to Martha Marie. Cannot thank her enough for taking time to talk to us, fangirl, and to impass all of her wonderful knowledge. We cannot thank you enough for taking time and to talk to us. And so you are an awesome, awesome lady. And I hope we are able to repeat this in the future. For events, of course, we have the TCC South Campus Anime Expo, April 14th in Fort Worth. Yes. Uh, we plan on going to Comic Palooza Houston Memorial Day weekend, so May 25th through the 27th in Houston, yes. Texas. Arlington Con is coming up June 30th in Arlington. That's exciting. Uh, mm-hmm. As well as Let's Play Gaming Expo July 27th through the 29th in Irving. Mm-hmm. And we're excited about this. And Finicon August 3rd through the 5th in Addison. And mm-hmm. last but not least, we're so excited, QuakeCon August yes. 9th through the 12th in Grapevine, Texas. So I believe registration for QuakeCon should be opening up pretty soon within mm-hmm. the next like two weeks or so. So definitely sign up if you can. So. Yeah. Definitely do the thing. Mm-hmm. Our next episode will be on April 22nd. So that'll be our 51st episode. Oh my God. So I guess with that being said, make sure to go ahead and subscribe to all of our social stuff. Please send out messages to us just to see how we're doing, how you're doing, and what you're playing. We're always interested to hear, especially about any of the games that we've listed that we are currently playing. If you have fanned boy or girl to all of that, stay freaking game tastic. Bye, guys. See y'all next time. I'm waving again. Fucking I'm about hell. to say, damn it. She, she, she did the damn thing. I, I can't help it. I just, it's, I'm a Hufflepuff, okay? When I say bye, I just, I have to wave. Like, she has feelings. <laughs> I love you guys. Bye. Oh, fuck. I got feelings too. Shit. Bye, y'all. Game responsibly, unless you're playing GTA. Stop waving. Okay, let me stop. Wait, put your hand down. Put your hand down. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.